Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Karina, and I'm coming to you from the Pacific Northwest, where I live with my partner, our two kitties, and these two characters. Odin the Mustang, which is the gray one right there, and then Braggy the Mustang, which is the <laughs> other one. Uh, Odin is the older one. He is 12, and Braggy is 6. If you've been here before, you know that I often do my kind of intro on the walk out to the barn to feed the horses. Well, I did that, but I totally screwed up, so I thought I would uh, just restart it, um, enjoy a little time with the horses, and I'm filling up uh, water buckets. So this is the last chore that I need to do before I go back up to the house. So it is Friday, June 14, 2024. Fridays are often my day off. Uh, however, I do have to work this afternoon, um, which doesn't really have any impact on uh, what I'm doing right now. Um, but it has been quite a busy week. I had to work until 7 p.m. last night. So Braggy's kind of startled about something. I'm not really sure what, but he, he is the alarmist of the group. Odin's a pretty steady Eddie. Um, yeah, so I have to work this afternoon. I am going to go to town and have coffee with a friend. Um, I have a writing lesson today on Odin. We are just going to do some work in the round pen there. Let's see if I can see it. Um, I have some poles set up and we have some exercises to do, so I want to practice that. Braggy has been making progress on his trailer training. He will get in, he will eat his hay, um, but he's very distracted. So I want him to be um, a lot more relaxed before we move forward on that, um, which is why I have been focusing on Odin for the last couple of weeks. You might recall from last week that uh, we had a little issue with the, the neighbor over there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but um, that's the neighbor's property over there on the other side of the trees um, about our property line. And um, he got mad, Randy got mad, both their feathers were ruffled, so they kind of, you know what happens when people get their feathers ruffled. So, and I had made a, I left uh, our neighbor the voicemail and just said, hey, let's talk about this. Well, he never called me back. I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt, but when last week he had the surveyors out and after the surveyors left, I finally kind of cornered him, I guess, and just said, just invited conversation and he was mad because he had to spend that much money on um, the survey which you know quite honestly getting a surveyor was the right thing to do we now know if we would have accepted what he thought was a property uh, boundary it would have been completely backwards um, so actually the property line or the fence line was kind of at an angle so some of it was on his property some of it was on ours um, the bad news is that part of our road like a third of our road out to the barn is on his property so he wants us to move the road um, which is, is fine I mean I, I think it's it's fair it's not a very big section we can probably Randy's sister might be able to do that uh, if we rent the equipment um, and I asked if, uh, if I could please continue to use his section of the road to, you know, get my farrier back here, walk the horses back and forth. Like I said, it's not a big section of road. I can easily keep me and the horses on our side. It's when a vehicle needs to come back here where it becomes an issue. And he said yes, and you know, multiple times, he said he he was he was mad because whatever whatever conversation he and Randy had, they both like I said kind of got all puffed up and acted like little banty roosters. Um, 
And I said, well, you know, I, I really wish you would have called me back. And I said that a few times, you know, I don't know that the outcome would have been any different to be fair, but at the very least we are on friendlier terms. And um, I think we may offer to help pay for um, part of the survey or half the survey. So when I see him again. So that is that news. The water bucket's almost full. This has been a really long introduction. Um, I will get to the knitting part of my uh, content later this afternoon and just talk about some other things. See you then. Hi everyone. Welcome to the knit and chat and knitting update portion of my podcast. Um, I hope you have something nice to drink and a project to work on. I have a few things to show you, uh, some updates on some projects and of course some horse riding stuff and some other life stuff. I already talked about um, the, the fence line drama this morning, so um, we'll just keep moving forward on that and um, get on with it, I hope. Next Friday, we will be leaving for vacation, so I'm not sure if I'll get a podcast out next week. I might try to, actually, I could do it the podcast earlier because I'm taking Wednesday and Thursday off. So maybe that's what I'll do. So we'll have a podcast next week and then we're gone bicycling for a week. And so the, the uh, end of June podcast will probably be late. So hopefully that's okay with all, all, all of you viewers who um, like to tune in. Um, thank you very much for your support on that. I really appreciate um, the viewers that I have and the comments that I get. It just kind of keeps me going uh, week after week. So as you are aware, if you're a returning viewer, this is not a an edited at all <laughs> video. It's just I tried a week or two ago. Uh, I signed up for uh, Canva which is a platform, it just wasn't intuitive enough for me. And I spend all my work week on the computer, so I really don't wanna spend my off time on a computer, except maybe for watching YouTube. Uh, let me review my notes. I have my computer in my lap, my little, it's a, just a small laptop, it's a Surface, so pretty small, pretty lightweight. Um, I have no finished objects for you this week. I had cast on uh, Hermione's Everyday Socks last week, and I do have one sock finished, so let me show you that. This is a bag that uh, my partner Randy made me. This was a prototype for a larger bag um, that is about twice this big, and I, it's just a perfect little sock bag. So let me show you. So this is the finished sock. Um, this is Hermione's Everyday Sock by uh, Erica Luter, I think. I have uh, the link to the pattern in, my, in the description box. So what I did is I did the first 10 rows of the cuff uh, in the contrast color, and then did the last five, did the pattern, did the heel flap, and the toe. Uh, the toe is a cottage toe by Kay Jones, which I really enjoy knitting it. I found out from wearing the quilted, scrappy quilt socks that I don't exactly enjoy wearing it. So this will probably be the last pair of socks that I do the cottage toe and I'll probably go back to, uh, I'm sorry, this is the umbrella toe. I'll probably go back to the cottage toe where there's decreases on each side of the foot. I don't like the decreases uh, under my foot. And as you can see on this one, there are decreases, you know, basically in four quadrants um, of this sock. So there's a decrease on the top as well. The yarn is Legacy Fiber Arts. This was part of their um, advent. These were 50 gram skeins with a, I think a 20 gram mini. Um, maybe it was a 10 gram mini. No, I think it was uh, a 20 gram mini. So this is Penguin Parade. So I think it's a fun colorway with the contrast. I love the contrast blue. Um, I am on the foot of the second sock. And so you'll notice that the cuff is different. 
on this one. So I cast this one on and once I was like four rows in, I realized I had cast on with the main color and not the contrast color. So I said, whoops, and just finished the fifth row in the main color and then did the contrast color for the last 10 rows for the 15 two by two rib, knit the sock, knit the heel flap, and now I'm on the foot. So typically I do about, I think there's about 50 rounds of leg, which is just comes up below my calf. And then about this one will have, I think 60 rounds in the foot. And that includes the gusset decreases. I use Chowgu Red Lace size zero needles, uh, which is I think one millimeter. I knit left-handed um, and so my gauge is a little bit looser. I think that's all I have to say about those socks. So chances are those will be a finished object next week and I will be able to talk about a new cast on, hopefully. So let's put that over here. Gotta kind of keep things out of Herbert, Herbert the kitty cat, he likes to murder yarn. Um, the other one I'm working on is a t-shirt by, uh, let me look at my notes, Tannis Fiber Arts. This is the flip side tee, and I have, this is the front, I think. Yes, this is the front. So I've split for sleeves, which I think this is a little bit further along. It's basically a raglan t-shirt um, with some detail around the um, around the seam. So let me see if I can show you that. It's, it's really hard to tell, but I think you can see a little bit there. Um, it's a kind of a lace pattern, like right around under the arms. Um, so that'll be really pretty. Um, I modified the pattern a little bit. I put a five row, two by two, um, collar on it. Otherwise, the pattern is without a collar. I'm knitting the smallest size. Forgot to mention about the socks. I'm knitting the smallest size. Um, part of that is because my gauge. I am also using a smaller needle size than what is recommended. I think this is gonna fit pretty nicely um, compared to the other tees that I have made, which are just too big. And I end up wearing them as layering pieces, whereas I think this one's gonna fit pretty good, uh, especially after it's blocked. So the yarn is, this is Knit Picks. Um, I think it's gloss in colorway Blackberry. This is a hand dyed yarn uh, that my mom bought me in Idaho when she was traveling there last summer. And then this gray is an unknown um, content uh, fingering weight yarn. This is all fingering weight. So looking forward to finishing that. It's Pretty, uh, the pattern's really easy to memorize, just like the Hermione's Everyday Socks. I think that's the third pair of socks uh, of the Hermione's Everyday Socks that I've made. Uh, very easy pattern to, to memorize. Um, so just perfect for relaxing, um, watching YouTube or TV or, or whatever. I could sit up straight, couldn't I? That would be nice, wouldn't it? <clears throat> um, although I am on the sofa, so. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me for that. Put that over there again out of Herbert's range. So that bag likes to fall off. That's just a commercial bag that my uh, late mother-in-law gave me some years ago. Um, I have a couple of projects in hibernation. So if you were watching over the winter and early spring, um, I had a cowl um, from my, it's a legacy yarn. So in other words, I inherited it from someone who uh, was de-stashing and, um, I knit a bunch of cowls over the winter and I kind of got burned out. So that one's hibernating. Um, I have been working on master sock knitting over the knee socks. They're called thigh high stripes or something like that made out of, uh, fingering weight yarn. I am getting kind of tired of it and I am not sure if I will pick that up again or frog it. Part of the problem is that I ran out of one of the colors and I got another color that's sort of matching, um, but it's a different fiber. Um, so it's alpaca. So I think the sock is going to be, the second sock is going to be quite different. So I'm not sure what to do about that. I could certainly mix up the colors 
on the second so I can just pick another one and um, another color I mean no one's gonna see them so it's not like I'm gonna be out there wearing a, a short and or a, a skirt and thigh-high stockings um, knitted stock striped stockings out in the world that is just not my style if you watch for a while you can see my my style is kind of like a classical button-down shirt with probably a t-shirt underneath or or a sweater with a t-shirt underneath so um, I'm mostly knitting those socks just kind of for an exercise in uh, color work and just for a long pair of warm socks we've had a long cold winter and even though it's June 14th today uh, the overnight temperatures are still in the 40s so the garden is a little behind and I will talk about that uh, in kind of the post knitting segment because I would like to stick to the topic for for once um, so what is going to be my next cast on I downloaded um, Kay Litton who is the crazy sock lady her heel toe do -si do pattern um, this is great for self-striping yarn I have a lot of self-striping yarn stash um, the next one I plan to do and I apologize for this it's still in the plastic bag this is um, stand by. Um, this is a, a spells and things by freckled whimsy this is September 2023 Norbert Oh, Nor Norbert or Norberta, I guess. Um, and it's a serendipity colorway. So some of my favorite colors are in there, the purple and that kind of mint green and the dark green, very much favorite colors. So I think I'm gonna try that um, next with the heel toe do -si do This bag was made by my mom. I got this for Christmas and it's just a very simple um, um, gathered bag that's perfect for socks with a drawstring it's great I'll tell you why it's great um, there's no zipper so that's easy to make um, the yarn doesn't get caught in the zipper and to keep Herbert out of it I can just tie a little knot like this and he cannot get in my yarn like he likes to do so I think that is next Sorry about that. This needs to go in sideways rather than lengthways. Tie that up and put that over here. I have an acquisition. So I'm trying really hard just to use my stash, but I kind of got addicted to the Polka Dot Creek uh, Blanket Club. I knit the um, uh, Kay Jones scrappy quilt socks out of them out of the April colorway I think it's April it's kind of a peach color I'm wearing them and I'm not going to do the awkward thing of bending over and taking out my socks and showing you my, the sock I've been wearing <laughs> so um very you know like nine colors of this kind of peach tone really pretty some of it's variegated some of it's speckled some of it's tonal uh, very pretty made great looking socks I love them um, I think the May colorway was a yellow. Not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, I, I kind of, I think I have it kind of gathered in a project bag upstairs with a potential match to, um, some other yarn that's in the yellow tones. Um, it could be another scrappy raglan sweater like I knit earlier this year out of some scrappy green, um, yarn I had. And then the June is a green. So I think I'm gonna do a uh, several, it's nine mini skeins of green. So I think I'm gonna do the K Jones Prairie Socks out of that, which uh, I was going to do with this this yarn, but I didn't think it would work in the pattern. So I just, did the pattern, wrote down the pattern for the um, Hermione everyday socks. So these are the, this is the prairie socks pattern. So I didn't think that variegated would work, but I think that the green um, kind of tonal polka dot creek blanket socks 
Blanket Club socks will. So, again, let me secure that against Herbert. He's been wandering around. So, I just got the bag. Um, this is, they come in, they come out quarterly. So this is the bag. This is for July, August, and September. And the wrapping kind of tells you what the um, yarn color will be, or at least a general idea. So this is July, very pretty. I think I have some other blue scraps upstairs. This is August. So I think what I'll do is I will reveal them in the month, when the month arrives. And this is September, so purple, one of my favorite colors. Um, so stay tuned for that. But that's the Polka Dot Creek Blanket Club. I have put a link in the show notes or the description box, whatever it's called these days. Okay, I need some tea. I'm a little parched. So I am drinking a holy basil um, tea. herbal tea um, and it's supposed to be good for the immune system so I have a, a good friend who who got COVID uh, finally um, she's never had COVID and she she got it after four years of, of avoiding it so her Facebook post said something like I'm no longer the COVID unicorn um, I have not yet had COVID and I have a few family members who have not yet had COVID uh, I have a few family members who have. So um, some of us are COVID unicorns, whether by luck, whether by, I, I think a lot of it, quite honestly, is luck. Um, I do wear a mask on planes and in the airport, but I have been getting a lot more careless in other public places. Um, and so far, so good. I think a lot of it, quite honestly, is I tend not to go to crowded places and stay there very long. I tend to be outside when I can. Most of my free time activities are outside and I work from home. So I don't necessarily see people. I was at a gather a work gathering a week or two ago and I kind of wondered if, um, if I was uh, gonna bring it home, but I, I didn't. And I honestly think that is luck. I've also been vaccinated and boosted, so that could be part of it too. Some of it's luck, some of it's by design, uh, some of it is just good prevention exercises. So call it what you will. I, I really hope to maintain my COVID unicorn status. Um, it has always been my belief that people are gonna get it eventually. eventually. So, and hopefully, um, you know, I have enough immune boosting that it's not going to be terribly consequence, consequential. So, enough about that. What else have I been up to? Um, I haven't had a lesson with Braggy for a while. We're continuing working on the, the trailer training. I think I talked about that a little bit this morning during that segment. We're just working on relaxation and focus, and um, that's just going to take time. Um, he loves to interact. He's done so well on so many other parts of the trailer training exercise, including walking nicely be, um, beside me when we're walking up, up the driveway. Um, he is able to move his haunches in the, inside the trailer. I mean, before his, his body was frozen, he was just like terrified. Um, he has been eating in the trailer. He has, uh, he hasn't tried to leave. Uh, and if he does kind of back up, I ask him to come forward and he says, okay. So I have been trying to be very fair with him. I'm looking at Herbert just to make sure he's, he, <laughs> he's sniffing a yarn bag on the floor. The one that I tied the little knot in. So he better not learn how to untie knots. Back to Braggy. Um, he is, um, he's just doing so much better. So it's, you know, this is a long game with horses and he, what I appreciate about, about him is, is that he just wants to interact. He wants to learn. Um, he wants to trust. So we're going to get there eventually. He might be an old man and I might be an old woman by the time that it happens, but that's fine. If we're lucky, 
will both be old someday. Um, so I have been focusing on writing uh, Odin and I had a lesson with him last week, which I, I talked about. And my trainer came over and we set up some ground poles in the, in the round pen. And I will, um, she took a video of me riding him, so, um, going over the poles. And um, so I will post that. It's a 30 second video. I will include it at the end of this segment. So you um, can enjoy that if you wish to, um, if you wish to do so. Other horse news. Um, it's not necessarily horse news, but it's barn news. And I will post a photo of that. So yes, yesterday, last weekend, I was doing some just moving hay around, kind of taking stock of how much hay I have, how much hay I'm going to need, because the local farmers are going to start starting to plan their cutting and um, who their customers are. And I have bought hay from a local, 100 bales from a local hay farmer for quite a while now. And it's beautiful local hay. Otherwise, I get Timothy hay from uh, Eastern Washington and a little bit of alfalfa. Well, I have... 20 bales of that local hay left. And I was kind of noticing as, ah, it's getting a little dusty. And, you know, I have them stacked up five bales high because that's as high as I can reach to put them up there. They're like 35, maybe 45 pound ba bales, uh, not 45, um, 40 pound bales. So, you know, once you get a rhythm and you understand how to do it without hurting yourself, it's, it's not a big feat um, to stack them. Plus I'm relatively tall. So five bales high is about um, forehead high for me. So, you know, I just have to lift up and just put it like about neck high and then the bale sits, uh, I guess it's above my head. All that to say, I was noticing some of the hay was getting a little dusty because it's been in there since last summer. So I was kind of like knocking it and kind of knocking the dust off and stuff because that's not good for horses um, lungs or any animal's lungs. Uh, so I was just kind of taking stock and I noticed there, there was this space between the two stacks that was a little bit, and I was just kind of knocking the dust down and all of a sudden this thing just goes zoom right, right by me. Um, and I peeked in there and I was like, oh my goodness, what was that? Um, and so I peeked in there and there's a nest with um, bird eggs in there. So a little bird has made a home there. So I, uh, all that to say, I, I took a picture of the nest while the mama bird was gone and then I left it and have been, I used that as a hay bag story stall. So I'm in there every day, but I really tried to not disturb that, um, that stack of bales. I did, I wondered though if I terrified the bird enough that she wasn't going to come back. And I peeked in there again this morning. And, you know, I didn't like stick my nose in there. I kind of stood back and just kind of like leaned over on you know, like a few feet back. And sure enough, she was still in there and she zipped out, this time not as dramatically. So I um, left the stall and closed the door and hopefully she went back in there to protect her nest. So I'm, I'm going to leave it there. So that's 10 bales for, uh, 10 bales for the birds. So I'm going to have to wait for them to fledge. And then that'll be winter, winter outside hay. Cause by then it'll be really dusty <laughs> and it's just better for ventilation wise, uh, for, to feed hay like that, for them to pick through it and decide what they want to eat and not eat. Um, I mentioned that we've had a long cold, um, spring. So temperatures are over. 45 degrees uh, overnight and and so it's a little chilly in the morning it has been getting up in the 60s and even the 70s during the day sometimes um, so the garden is a little behind um, I have seen pictures on Facebook of people and their tomatoes my tomatoes are still that big uh, my basil is barely sprouting um, I'm getting some greens so it's good greens weather. I planted fava beans, I want to say in late February, early March. I am still waiting for a harvest. I mean, that's like supposed to be a, a an April harvest and it's just taken so long. 
So still buying a lot of produce from the grocery store, still trying to plant out cabbage and uh, broccoli and stuff like that. Uh, eating kale that overwintered and uh, some kind of a, a red stemmed and veined green um, and some dandelion greens um, occasionally. So we still have dandelion, we still have nettles, which is, uh, and I haven't harvested any nettles. So, um, but that is something that we also enjoy eating. Uh, it's, 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 nettles are good if you cook them and you can use them instead of uh, spinach. So, and they're really good for you. So that's gardening, still waiting on, on that. Probably have a harvest, a great tomato harvest in October, which sometimes happens. Uh, bicycling, continuing to do my bicycle training. Um, pardon me while I get more tea. So last Saturday we did a 20, I think it's a 23 mile bike ride, which was really fun. That's the longest one I've done so far. Typically during the week, my bike rides are um, anywhere from three and a half to six miles. I did one earlier in the week, um, and I'll get to work stuff here shortly. I did one earlier that was about, I want to say 12 or 13 miles. I just took some time out in the middle of the day because I knew I was going to have a busy work week. So um, it is honestly my goal to not work over 40 hours if I can help it. I just don't think that's good life, work-life balance. So that is that. I was trying to remember. Oh, I know what we did on Sunday. Uh, we had family over. So we're celebrating my dad's wife's uh, 76th birthday. So we hosted um, here and uh, my dad and his wife and uh, her sister and her husband came over and we had a really nice dinner on the deck. It was a beautiful day. We had some um, steelhead that is farmed in the Columbia River. Um, different than farmed salmon, so I don't really want to get into that discussion too much, but I believe that farmed steelhead is more sustainable um, than farmed salmon. So steelhead is a seagoing trout, and salmon is obviously a seagoing salmon. So different species of fish with different ecological impacts. Uh, the food was delicious. I made um, out of the, I've talked about the book, um, Misunderstood Vegetables. I made a dish um, out of Rom Rom Romanesco, which is like a cross, it's kind of a lime green. It's a cross between a cauliflower and um, broccoli. So that's, it's got kind of a funny cone head shape with uh, like, kind of cauliflower like texture. Well, the recipe called for it to either be put in the food processor to be ground up um, or um, hand grating it. And I ended up hand grating it uh, on a box grater. And it really didn't take very long. It just it kind of made a mess. My food processor isn't big enough. It's like a two cup food processor that I can make pesto out of. Um, so what I did is I ordered myself uh, as an early birthday present um, a, I think a six cup um, food processor. So that's, it was a really good dish. Uh, it's, it's tossed with some chili powder and a lot of, and like chopped up cilantro stems and, um, and all, I'm pretty sure there was olive oil in there. I can't remember if you added the olive oil afterwards. Um, and then, uh, you roast that in the oven at a really high temperature for like 15 minutes, and then you toss it. Um, I can't remember the recipe exactly, but it ended up being really tasty. I also roasted some potatoes and made a, um, a kale salad with kind of a, just a standard apple cider vinegar uh, vinaigrette dressing, homemade dressing, uh, that ended up being really tasty. So the kale salad had red onion and... Um, it had feta, you can use goat cheese, and it also had a diced up apple. So very tasty. Um, I first learned of that recipe from the, uh, it was, it's a kind of a, it's not Whole Foods, but it's a, 
a market, it's called PCC, and I honestly can't remember what, it's a local to the Seattle area um, um, grocery store and I, some, some kind of a co-op. Um, I got that recipe off their website. It was a massage kale salad and you massage it with salt um, and it makes it really tasty, but it also kind of makes it a little salty. So I just decided to mix up the salad early and let the um, dressing do the work, the vinaigrette do the work. Um, work stuff, just really, there's a lot going on. Um, I had a meeting until 7 p.m. last night, which is why I did take some time to do some bike riding during the week. Um, and I also have to work this afternoon. I have a meeting at 3 p.m. Um, for a pretty significant grant application that our department is applying for with in partnership with the executive's office, um, the county executive's office. So it's a big deal. So I'm going to be present um, for that. And I just have a couple things I need to catch up on. So, and that's fine. Happy with that. And then, like I said, next week, I am working Monday and Tuesday and then taking the rest of the week off. So, and then I'm going to be gone for a week and a half. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what else? Uh, I made some sourdough bread yesterday. It's the easiest sourdough bread. It is delicious and it is beautiful. It's a 24 hour, um, ferment on the counter and you just mix the ingredients together. It's like two cups of water, four cups of flour, a quarter cup of um, sourdough starter, and uh, I have the recipe, a tablespoon of salt. I put the recipe in the show notes if you are interested in that. You just mix it up, you ignore it, you leave it on your counter, you can fold it. I, I usually, you know, every time I walk by, I fold it. Um, and then let it sit overnight. And by morning, it was pretty, it had grown up quite a bit. And it's just, it's really delicious if you can eat bread. Um, apparently sourdough, when you do a long ferment like that, it, it reduces the impacts of gluten if you are gluten sensitive. I don't think you could do it if you have celiac or, or some other, you know, gluten intolerant um, condition, but if you are, are sensitive, then uh, this might work for you. I am not sensitive to gluten, and I am happy about that because I am allergic to almonds, which um, there's almond, you know, I can't have almond flour or almond milk or anything like that, so I have to be careful about what um, some ingredients in um, food that is supposed to be good for you, especially plant-based. There is a, I was at the co-op uh, this morning shopping for ricotta and I looked at the vegan um, cheese section and they they have vegan ricotta but it's made out of uh, almond milk so yeah huh, bah humbug I have made vegan ricotta out of tofu and it's it's good I just didn't feel like it I was feeling lazy so that being that um, just reading and watching, I titled this episode as Bridgerton Train because, um, I finally started watching Bridgerton. I don't know if you are a fan. It's on Netflix. I subscribe to Netflix specifically for this and I'm on season one. And uh, if you haven't watched it, I will just share with you. I just, there was a duel. So, uh, it's kind of Jane Austen-ish, kind of um, Downton Abbey-ish, if you kind of like that sort of thing. Uh, I recommend it. So that is really all I have going on. Um, we've been watching some bikepacking videos on YouTube. Um, we have been watching America's Got Talent. And I am reading a mystery book that I could not tell you who the author is. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes that's all that matters. It's just a light of a mystery. Not that murder is light, but a light topic, but it's not horror or thriller or anything like that. It is just a murder mystery. So that's what I've been up to. And um, I think I will leave it at that. Have a great week. Enjoy this video and I'll see you next time. Job. Hands together.
That's good on the forward. Good. Job. good. Yep. Yeah, that's actually quite good on the rhythm. Well done. Eyes up. Good job. Good job.